Hello and welcome to day 24 of this Unity game development journal. So uh, if you've been following along you know this is week 4 and in week 4 I'm working on a, a new way of manipulating maps. So I've worked on quite a few really cool things so far which is um, you know generating an entire map in the whole world uh, based like custom inside the script uh, for using a coordinate system and then we can place tiles within that coordinate system. Uh, after I got that, after I had that up and running, I worked on the collision system and the um, the A star pathfinding algorithm for the AI, which both worked amazingly with this new grid based system that I'm scripting up myself. Today, I wanted to see if I could utilize the tiled uh, visual editor for doing the visual side of it, not the data, but more of the actual sprites. Uh, if I can export this visual into a CSV formatted file, which is comma separated list, and then have a parser in my game that reads that in and then creates the map or the world based on this visual. So essentially, this is the test little map I'm working with, an eight by eight little map. There's four different tiles here, a grass, a cobblestone, a water, and a sand. These don't really, really mean anything, they're just, um, they're just the visuals. But if you go up here, you can take a look. Uh, if I click on one of these tiles, you can see in the property, which is for the water here, uh, I have an ID of 342. I have things like um, the grass here has an ID of 99. I use some sand, which is here, has an ID of 549. So each one of these tile, individual tiles, has an ID related to it. And if I export this, uh, I, I go export as, as a CSV file down here, what I can do in my program is import or put that into my resources folder and it generates a file that looks like this. So let's open this up so we can see it bigger. Uh, but essentially you have just comma separated numbers and these numbers are those IDs for those tiles. So here I have, you can see they're grouped into the four corners, 99s, 85s, 342s, and 549s. And that's essentially all of that, all that uh, visual sprite map was is just all these numbers laid out in some sort of an order. So each number represents a tile along the x-axis and each row represents uh, the y-axis. So you can tell there's eight y rows on the y um, and then uh, eight columns on the x there. Really really simple, really awesome. So what I did from there is I created some files here. I created a parser, so a tile map parser up here that simply takes in that file, I pass it that file, and it uh, has a path to it through the resources, and then it stream it opens a stream reader uh, with the, for that file name, and then what I do is I go through and I set each line in that file into a list of string, and I'm doing this first step just so I can figure out the size of the of the map. So the size is the number of rows in the file is the height of the map. And the number of comma separated items in a row in a line is the width of the map. So I want to figure that information out before I move any further. So I just go through and I read the entire uh, file line by line by reading a line, individual line, looping through until the next line is null and then I stop. But at each line I just add it to this list called file lines. That's all I do. And then once I'm done that I close the reader and I come down here to this loop. And this loop is going to actually create the, um, the two-dimensional array, fixed array size. And that fixed array size is going to be each coordinate on our map is going to have um, a tile ID associated with it. And this is where I'm generating that. So I have a width set to zero because I don't know the width yet. But once I go in here, I grab the first line out of the uh, lines list that I create up here. And then I split that line on the commas. And this is very basic because I know everything in this line is either a number or a comma. So I'm just going to split on the commas and I'll have numbers left over. And I populate a string array with that. That's what this generates. So I create a string array called tile row IDs. If I haven't set a width yet on this, uh, on this map, it's set to zero. So I'm going to uh, go through and set the width of the map to the tile row IDs, the length of this. So how many items are in this string array? That sets the width. And then at the same time, I also initialize a new um, fixed two-dimensional array 
filled with integers. With the width of this map, then the height of the map is going to be the file lines, the count of file lines. So the size of this list that we generated up here. And that's going to be the height of the map. Once I have those things set, I come down here and I go through another loop that's going to loop through each individual number in, in this uh, split string array. And I parse that, this is a string, so I'm going to parse out an integer, which is going to be like the 99 or the 84, or whatever that number was. And it sticks it in my CSV tile ID's uh, two-dimensional array based on an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate that I got from these loops. And this is going to translate directly to our map um, data that we're going to use in a bit. So from all this information, I can gather the map width and the map height very easily. I already have that stuff figured out. And that's it. That's the parsing of the entire file. And that one file that's coming from the tile program runs through this um, algorithm here, and it completely generates the tile data for this map data. So the first thing that happens is I start the game, it starts in the scene, and a world controller is created. And once that starts, it runs the parser, passing it the file, so it gets all that parser data. And then we generate a new world, passing it the parser data, and for this debugging, I pass it the controller as well. Um, so the, let's see, the world here. Coming up into the world, we have the uh, world created here. So the world gets the parser data and the controller. The parser data, parser data sets the map width and the map height to this world width and world height. So that's how we know how big this world is going to be from that parser CSV file. Awesome. Um, then we generate a new uh, tile model of fixed size array based on that same map width and map height. And then we're going to do a double loop through here to get the coordinate system over x and y using the map width and map height once again from the parser data. So now that we have an x, y coordinate for every one of those coordinates, we're going to do a few things here. We're going to create a brand new tile model. Um, we're going to uh, set the sprite ID on that tile model to the parser data's CSV tile ID for those same coordinates. So each coordinate is going to have a relating tile ID that we're going to assign to the sprite ID here. And then I just add this to our tiles a fixed array, double uh, array here, that tile data. Once I have that, I can create a brand new game object for this tile, which is what we were doing in the other video where I just create a, a, a game object with the name tile, then the X, Y coordinate. I create uh, the position based on that X and that Y. I set the parent to this uh, controller, so it just organizes it. I add a sprite renderer to here, and essentially this is all that this uh, map world model is going to do. But I was having some issues with the uh, change ID callback for this tile, so I decided just to set the tile sprite right here with it, just to get the thing working. And all this does is it checks the tile ID and assigns it to a sprite that I've passed in there. Now this is far from what's going to happen in the final game. In the final game, I'm still thinking of how this is going to work. Um, I may be able to just tag this um, number onto the end of a file name and then access that file name as a sprite in my sprites folder. And then it just automatically knows what sprite to grab for this. So I don't have to directly link this to the number. That's probably the easiest way to go if I can get that to work. Now, if I can't get it to work, I'm going to have to generate a whole asset database referencing each tile number to the tile sprite, which is going to be a lot of work. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to try and figure out a much better way to do this that's just automatic. All right, so what I have here, and that's essentially it. That's it. That just assigns it. And then uh, that, then we can go in and take a look at what it looks like. So here is the file that's going to create our world for us. I'm going to hit play. And you can see it sort of worked. Well, I'll go into new game here, and there it is. So there's our um, map that we generated in tiled right here. Export as this uh, CSV file, which looks like this. And then our game parses it and creates a brand new world at the correct size. So I can't walk off the map. The map is the correct size. And the tiles all look right. Use the correct sprites. If we go into the console, um, you can see it's a world created with 64 tiles. 8 by 8 is 64. Sweet. All right, so I just noticed something here where the um, the water and sand's in the top and the grass and all that's in the bottom. So if you look here, it's reversed. So what's happening is it's reading it in from the bottom, I guess, or maybe when it generates the CSV, it generates it from the bottom up. 
So uh, since we want our map to look the same as when we're actually designing it, we just have to make a simple change here. So let's go into the parser. And this is sort of why it's great to have this broken out into two parts. When I read into my lines list here, um, what I can simply do is uh, take this and reverse it. And boom, boom, save that. And let's go back here, exit out of there. All right, now let's go back in. And there we go. So we have the water and the sand on the bottom. Let's just double check, yeah, water, sand. Grass is on the left, water's on the left. Perfect. So that's a quick little fix there. Uh, reversed our map so it's all in the correct order now. And there you have it. So there's the end of this video. So um, yeah, if you want to uh, subscribe, if you haven't subscribed yet, if this is new to your channel, please uh, subscribe. You can follow along with the game development. Um, if you have any questions or comments, put them below, please, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you like the video, drop us a like. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one.